In this video, we will create a range visual directly in OMI. And here is my reference. So basically, we are going to learn how to properly place these products, how to play them on a support, how to orient them, how to move the lights, and how to use different types of camera to make a video or a photo. And at the end, we will see how to place a hand above your products. Then, we will see how to change your skin color without removing everything and how to change the color of your nail polish. We are in the 3D studio and the first things to do is to place your products. For that, we need to click on the products button on the left to display the products menu and I'm going to search my products. I drag my product into my scene. Now we need to place our first support and then transform it into a transparent glass. The first things to do is to make it appear using the library button on the left. I'm going to type B O A R D and take the thick one and then we can drag our support into our 3D studio. I use tool number 6 and click on center. Now, if we watch the reference, the camera is too high and tilt from the products. I'm going to change the camera with the camera button on the left. And I'm going to click on preset and select the overview camera. Now, we are aligned with the reference. I'm going to move all my products. To do a multiple selection, I need to select an object. I hold the shift button and select all the products. I'm going to zoom with my trackpad using two fingers moving vertically or using the mouse wheel. So here I can use this button or I can use the arrows on the keyboard. If I'm moving with this button, my support won't be centered and I must do it again. I can use the tool number 6 and click on center. I can scale my support with the tool number 1. We can see that my reference is in square format. So I can scale my visual with this format button at the bottom on the left. Here we have a lot of preset format or I can type the pixel value just at the top. I will place the support correctly like in the reference. I'm going to scale up a bit. And I'm going to move the product to get more comfortable when placing the supports. Then, I'm going to clone my support. I select it and drag it just behind the first support. I'm selecting the support and I can drag it into the 3D studio to make it appear. I'm going to select the tool number 6 and click on center. Okay, now let's see the reference. And now I'm going to place my product on the support. I'm going to select the product, so I'm going to use the move button. Normally, the product will be placed automatically over the support. If that's not the case, you can use the tool to move your products vertically. It's tool number five to place it correctly on the support. If I'm looking at the reference, these two products are superimposed. So I'm going to grab a product, place it on the other product, and use tool number 3 to tilt. Tool number 4 makes a rotation based on the world. And tool number 2 makes a rotation based on its axis.
I just select my product and use the arrow keys to adjust pricesly. Now I'm going to align it again. I can also use tool number 6 and the different button to align automatically. So I'm going to do it manually and as you can see the glass of this product is dressed right here and I'm going to do it the same things with the other product on the right. So I'm going to uh, take the product on the right and try to merge with the product on the left. And I'm going to use the arrow on the keyboard to move it on the right. It seemed to be good. I'm going to make a preview to see how it looks and maybe we can try an adjustment. Now I'm going to transform my support into a transparent glass. I select my objects and a menu appears on the left. This is the textures menu. I find the transparent glass, then I can change the color of the glass, but to stick to the reference, I'm going to stay with the pure white. I'm going to repeat this action on the other support. I'm going to make a preview to see how it looks and check if we need any adjustment. The preview is done. The first thing is that the glass is very dark. It can be due to bad lighting for this type of composition. But in our case, the support is just stuck to the ground and it can't work. So I'm going to select the glass, use tool number 5 and slightly levitate the support to make it less dark. I can use the slider or I can type a value to be more precise. I'm going to display the grid to get visual help. I'm going to use the slider number 5 and type a value. So actually, I am at 0 0.007. We can see quickly that the support is less dark, otherwise it's a bit too high. So I'm going to lower it a bit. Instead of 0.007, I'm going to type 0.002. I'm going to make a preview. It's too high, so I'm going to edit the value again. And I'm going to type 0.001 and erase the following value. Don't hesitate to make a lot of previews to better understand the location of each asset. It's very important. It seems to be good. For this video, I'm going to continue, but you can move forward if you want. I'm going to copy the value of the vertical translation tools and paste the value on the second support to make it them similar. The shortcut is Ctrl-C, Ctrl-V on Windows or Command-C, Command-V on Mac or you can right-click to copy and paste. I'm going to make another preview again and let's move on to the next step. At this step, we are good. Let's continue. We must select the light with the light button on the left. I'm going to keep the noon light but we need to rotate the light with the sliders at the bottom on the left once you click on the lights menu. So if you watch the shadow, you can see that it's moving. So I'm going there and I'm going to make a new preview again because it's very important to see how it looks like. The lighting is correct. We have now a good result. Now we need to set an animation on a product. For example, if I'm selecting this product, I'm going to set this animation, so the 360 animation. My animation is set. I can play the animation and you can see that the product makes a 360 degrees movement and the product on it moves too. Attention, you might encounter the following issues when you set an animation and the product on the top doesn't move, it's because the object is technically not on the surface of the product above. 
So for example, as you can see just right here, I can I can drop the product above the product. But if you did this in that way, so if I place the product in the product, and after that I use the tool number five to make it uh, levitate, like this, as you can see, the product is not moving. But the product under the product is moving. So it's very important to place the product on the product. By the way, I just changed the 360 animation to a show of animation. But you can use any animation you like. Let's get back to our subject. So I'm going to generate a new video with the button on the top right. You can select the duration of your video. If you want to generate a picture, you need to remove the animation and switch back to a photo camera. So if I had set an animation on this product, I need to remove it to generate a photo. I'm going to generate a new video, so I'm going to set a new video camera. If I click on camera on the right and video on the top, I can select the dolly camera in the traveling category. So if I check the reference, as you can see, I use dolly. If I hover my mouse over dolly, we can see that the products are too small. So I'm going to scale and adjust them. I'm going to select the advanced camera in the photo mode and with that I'll be able to move my camera everywhere. So I'm going to select my support and scale them with tool number one. To move my supports I'm going to reset my camera position with the button at the top to relocate me in front of our products. By moving my camera, I can see that the both support are too close, so I'm going to move them further apart. So I'm going to change the angle of the camera again to see if the space between them is good, and as you can see, it's good. Then I'm going to turn the video camera and over my mouse over Dolly to see a preview movement. Now we can see that the products are adjusted and it's better for our visual. I'm going to generate a video, don't forget to select the Dolly camera and then click on generate video. I can choose the duration of the video and set a name. And here is the video, I hope you managed to create something similar. At least I hope this video helped you better understand the creation of a scene from A to Z, the placement of your product, the lighting, the cameras. The video is not finished yet, we will see together how to place a hand. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be aware of the latest video, let's continue. If you are still here, it's because you want to know how to add a hand to your visual or just because you are curious. So I'm going to click on library on the left and collection at the top. I'm going to search for the hands collection and here you have many hands at your disposal. I'm going to select elegant hand and left. I'm going to drag this hand into my composition. And you can see that we have a big cut off arm. So we are going to tilt it with tool number three to avoid showing the cut off arm. I'm going to move the hand with the arrow keys on my keyboard to be more precise. Then I'm going to select tool number 5 to raise it. We need to set the hand above the products, so I need to select the advanced camera to see more angles. We can see that my hand is not aligned. And we could have a weird result if it's not. So we have to make it aligned. Now, I'm going to edit the color of the nail polish. I'm going to pick the color and adjust it to be more saturated and slightly more orange. Then, 
Then I'm going to edit the color of the skin. So I'm going to select swap and type elegant hands. And it's very important to type exactly the same name because if you swap to another hand position, you might get different results. For example, if I replace my hand with elegant hand right, the hand is no longer in the frame. So I'm going to type exactly elegant hand left and pick one of these hands. Now I'm going to select the overview camera. To get this menu, you can click on camera on the left, select preset and then overview. Now I can make a preview to see how it looks. The preview is finished. If you like it, you can generate a new video or you can adjust it as you like. But on my side, I'm going to generate a video. Again, I'm going to generate another video with a traveling effect. I'm going to select the Dolly camera video. I hover my mouse over the camera to see a preview. As you can see, the traveling effect is good. So I'm going to generate a new video just right here. This is the end of this tutorial, thank you for watching until the end. I hope this video helped you, do not hesitate to share your difficulties and we will dedicate an article or a video as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your stories and posts on Instagram, it's always a pleasure. And if you don't want to miss any tutorial, please subscribe. And thanks a million and see you soon on the OMI channel.